You only sabotage when you're starting to make strides and you're starting to get this figured out and you're starting to do well. And then all of a sudden it sets in. You have got to recognize the pattern. If you are oblivious of your own sabotaging mechanisms and patterns, you will never win. We're working against years and years and years of old conditioning and that's not your fault, but it's your responsibility because it's your life. And I am literally giving you the tools to run with it and change your life forever. Now it is up to you to take this information and run with it. What's going on, friends? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Dieting from the Inside Out. If you are new here, welcome to the show. My name is Jared Hamilton, and I am beyond pumped for today's episode because I am going to give you the crash course to ending self-sabotage. You know, what's funny is I was actually going to um, be sending uh, some people, I was having some conversations in my DMs and a lot of people were struggling with sabotage. So one of the things that I like to do is I'll just send resources. I'm like, oh, you're struggling with that? I have a podcast on it. Oh, that's an issue. I have a re or have a, a Facebook um, training on it or a YouTube video or whatever. But I noticed I didn't really have the content, at least I couldn't find it on the podcast of just talking about sabotage. Or if I did, it wasn't like a newer episode. It was like really old and I'm not very happy with my old episodes, but uh, I'm refusing to delete them. So, um, but I figured, you know, I haven't done a talk on this and sabotage is one of my favorite things to touch on, to talk on and teach about. So I figured what better time, and that's what we're gonna get into today because fighting and overcoming self-sabotage and weight loss is, uh, is more of a mental and inner game situation than just like a willpower thing. And it's not how most people think um, when it comes to sabotage or how it works or what it is. So that's what we're going to get into. So I'm going to break down for you in this episode, I'm looking at my notes, um, what sabotage actually is, why we do it, like why we actually have, why it happens so we can stop it. And then lastly, tactically how to fix it and how to stop it. So that's what we're going to get into on today's episode. Um, it is a solo, just me, but before we get into all of the goods, big thank you to the sponsors of the show. Sponsor number one, Flex Pro Meals, because it just makes eating easier. We are all crazy. We all have things going on. We all um, have chaos going on. And sometimes we don't have the time, energy, or bandwidth to make food. And that's when we make decisions that aren't so great. So it can be really helpful to have food on deck in your fridge that is not just like in line with your goals, but also tastes really good too. So if you're into that and you really don't want to, have to think about your food and, and things like that, and you just have the food ready to go, where all you got to do is throw it in the microwave and it's going to be cheaper than going through fast food. It's going to be better for you than going through fast food. And it's just seamless. Check out Flex Pro Meals. Um, you can either go to their website, flexpromeals.com, or hit the link in, bo- in the, bo- the description if I could talk. Um, but if you are into saving money, uh, use my code Hamilton Trained and it'll save you like 20% at checkout. So give that a look. And then our second sponsor, which is First Form. We all know, I say it every podcast, that supplements are not the end all be all. Supplements are not the thing that the industry makes them out to be. Like I had someone ask me, um, if like they're interested in joining my Facebook group and they're like, well, do you just like push push supplements? I go, no, like I work with first form because I love them and I trust them and supplements are a good addition if you are missing the things from food, but that's it. So that's why they're a sponsor of the show, but it is not like a requirement to work with us. It's not a requirement and the main thing with anything that I do. Um, but they are one of those things where if you are not getting what you need from food, they are very helpful and not all supplements are created equal. So that's why we work with first form because I want to make sure if you're going to be spending money on supplements, you are getting quality and value in the things that you need. So that's why we work with them. So if that's kind of your cup of tea, definitely check the link below for some free shipping stuff. Um, and where you can look and see about getting, your supplements taken care of or upgrading what you are taking. And if you do have questions or you aren't sure where to start with that, there's a YouTube video down there below for you as well. But <clears throat> let's get into today's episode. If you haven't subscribed yet, I always forget to tell you guys to do that or ask you guys to do that, I should say. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet to the show so you're notified every time we drop one of these, um, it would mean a lot to me. So definitely do that. So that way you're notified whenever something goes live, because I have some really cool shit coming down for you. Um, but now let's, without further ado, let's get into sabotage. Let's talk about this because the thing is sabotage is such an interesting conversation because a lot of people think it's this elusive thing that, that no one really knows. Cause it's, it's kind of intangible, right? You just one day like wake up and you're back to where you started and you're like, how the fuck did this happen? So Sabotage, like I said in the beginning, we're going to break this down into four parts. We're going to go into like what actually is sabotage because we before we can fix it, we need to like define what it is or at least make sure we're all in agreement on what the thing is that we're talking about. Then we're going to talk about why we do it. 
why it happens. Because now once we understand the reason behind it, you can execute accordingly to stop it. And then lastly, um, we are going to talk about how to actually fix it. Like the actual tangible steps you can implement right now so you are no longer a victim of sabotage. Because here's the thing, I understand firsthand how frustrating this is. I know very, very well down to my bones because I've been there, I've done that. Um, sabotage can literally ruin everything. Because here's what's interesting. Um, uh, actually, I just remembered something um, that I did not put in my notes that I want to put in there. Because the, what's interesting, actually I'll talk about it right now, is what triggers sabotage is what gets most people. What triggers sabotage and causes it to, to, to take into effect? I ask people about this a lot. Like when we're talking with clients or when, um, you know, someone's applying for coaching and they say their big issue is sabotage. They always sabotage, you know, it doesn't matter what they do, no matter what diet they try, they're always sabotaging, no matter how good they're doing, something always happens. And I ask them this, I go, do you, do you know what, like the actual trigger to start the catalyst of sabotage is? No one knows. It's this. It's progress. How fucked up is that? The cause of sabotage is you making progress. That's kind of, that's kind of crazy. The, the reason you only sabotage, you notice when you're doing well, you only sabotage when you're starting to make strides and you're starting to get this shit figured out and you're starting to, to do well. And then all of a sudden, um, it sets in, right? Um, it's because think of it this way. Um, I'm stealing this analogy from Ed Milet because it's so true. Sabotage, um, is kind of like a thermostat on the wall, right? <clears throat> so, um, let's say your thermostat is set at 70 degrees and the room heats up to 80 because you left the door open. Well, your thermostat's going to go, oh, we're not set here. It's going to cool the room back off. Now we'll get into the deeper reasons why here in a few minutes, but that's, that's how kind of sabotage works is your setting is here, whatever your proverbial 70, and then you get results, bam, losing weight, feeling good, making progress. But there's reasons that your setting is here. There's identity reasons, there's mental reasons, there's habitual reasons, there's emotional reasons. And that's why you, one thing leads to another and you cool the room back off. Because the hard part is with sabotage, you're on, you're on autopilot 90% of the day. So that's what makes us hard to fight. So that's what we're talking about. Sorry, I'm kind of getting distracted a little bit. So what is sabotage? Let's break this down. If you're watching the YouTube video, which you should be, um, if you see me looking around, it's because I'm looking at my notes. So the crash course in sabotage, what is sabotage? Um, you have to understand sabotage is always subconscious in most cases. When people are talking about sabotage, in most cases, it's they are not physically or consciously aware they're doing it. Yeah, sometimes people are like shoveling like, you know, like a whole tub of ice cream in their mouth and they're like, I know I'm sabotaging. Well, I'm talking about the major, that, that's, that's, yeah, that's technically sabotage. But that's more of like knowing what to do, but not doing it or knowing you're making a bad decision, but doing it anyway. Sabotage is always in the conversation of its subconscious, as in you are not consciously aware you are doing it, right? That's what we, what I mean by sabotage. So it's very rarely just sabotage. It's subconscious self-sabotage, which is the biggest thing that makes this game tricky because you're on autopilot like 85 to 90% ish of the day. That's when you sabotage. That's when it happens. It's not when you're like aware. It's why you get motivated. You're fired up. You just start something and you do well. And it's right when you start like doing good and you start making progress and you start feeling better Then like something like happens under the surface. You don't notice, or you start cutting corners or you stop, um, whatever the case may be, there's a million ways to do it, but you start doing the thing or stop doing the thing and you don't know what's happening. It's almost like, have, uh, have you guys ever like been driving to work or going home from work or it's been on like a Saturday, but you kind of like are driving on autopilot and you made the wrong turn, right? You meant to go to like the chiropractor, but you turned into the gym because you go there like three days a week or whatever it is. Or have you ever been driving to work and like, you don't even realize you're driving or you get to your work and you're like, I stopped at every one of those lights. I passed people, turn signal, the whole nine yards. And I'm just kind of like in a daze. That's the power of a subconscious action. You don't realize you're doing it. Most of your actions every day are subconscious. You parenting, you driving, you working, you doing all the things that used to be like a hard skill set. You just do subconsciously. Welcome to why sabotage wrecks most people's fat loss in their goals. And they don't even realize it because you're fighting a thief in the night. That's basically knows you to every T and only attacks when you're not aware. That's what we're up against. So that's why most people take their struggles to their grave because they don't know how to fight the enemy of sabotage and win. So let's continue. So 
It's always subconscious. <clears throat> it's pattern driven. This is the biggest asset with sabotage. Sabotage is a pattern. It's not random. If you were to like, let's say remove all emotions and you were to zoom out and look at the last, I don't know, five years of your struggle of losing weight and gaining it back and all the things, I bet you have a common denominator of like five or six things that always happen. You do well until around the, like the two week mark and then you get busy in life and you fall off or you do well and the scale spikes and you say, fuck it. And you fall off. You, you start to do well. You, the scale goes the other way. You may gain weight or lose weight and something happens, you fall off. Um, you may be doing well and then you lose motivation. So now you go from going to the gym three days a week. You're now maybe lucky to go one day a week. Then once every other week, then you're like, I haven't been in th three months. See what I mean? Where you don't realize you're doing it. You may lose intention. You may go from like tracking calories to rounding calories. You may go from like, all right, every, like getting, getting back on track immediately when you fuck up to like, I'll just start over tomorrow, right? It's these little things that add up and that cause you to, dr to drift and sabotage. So you have to understand though, it's always pattern driven. The game of sabotage is a game of awareness because if we don't know what the, the common thing that happens of the pattern, if you're not aware of the normal routine of sabotage, how the fuck are you going to get on the other side of it and stop it and put, in, put your action and plan into place? This is why with sabotage, you have got to recognize the pattern. When you can literally point at the pattern, you're no longer trapped inside of it. You're outside of it. For example, I had a mentor of mine um, tell me, he, he, he was watching a video of mine. He says, can I give you some feedback? And I go, yeah. He goes, you say like way too much. You know, like, like that. Um, I've said it already too many times on this episode. I was unaware. I said like so many times. And because it was a pattern, it was a pattern of a filler word when I don't know what to say or whatever the case is, it just came out. It was a subconscious pattern. I didn't know that happened, but now he pointed it. He goes, you say it to say the word like too much. And I go, Oh, wow, you're right. And then I'm watching my videos and I say it all the time, or I would catch myself like, just like right now. And I would say it, but when he pointed it out, I'm no longer inside the pattern. I'm outside of it looking in going, ah, that's the problem. This is why one of the first things that we address with clients in the inner game world is their sabotaging mechanisms because everyone's different. Everyone sabotages in a different way. But if you are a oblivious of your own sabotaging mechanisms and patterns, you will never win. This is why one of the best things, the best, the most underrated piece of progress one of our clients will have, our clients will have is they go, ah, I'm doing it again, aren't I? And they recognize their own sabotaging patterns. Here's the truth. Sabotage never stops trying to set in. The difference is you catching it early and aren't being controlled by it. We are naturally lazy. We're naturally around lazy people. We live in a society where we naturally avoid things that we don't want to do, that have resistance, and we naturally drift, right? We always grow or die. It's like my whole tattoo meaning, my giant tree. It's we grow or die, you're either, either moving forward or moving backwards. But all of us, because we are humans, left to our own devices, we will drift and sabotage any result we have. If you quit brushing your teeth, your oral health sabotages. You quit communicating with your partner, your marriage starts to go south. You don't constantly work on your business, it will it will start to die. You could buy a car brand new off the showroom, showroom floor, put it in a warehouse for however long, and it not, never touch it, and it won't turn on because it, because it, died essentially the same kind of thing. So you have to understand that you're always going to naturally sabotage and drift away, which is why you always want to be on the offense for sabotage are aware of all of the things that in which it happens and what the patterns are. So you can implement your plan. That's what we're going to talk about. So it's always subconscious. It's always pattern driven, which means you can, you can spot the trail of breadcrumbs, so to speak. Cause at the end of the day, it's also, it's, it's literally like you wake up and you're back where you started. Like one of the things that I we talk about in coaching and in my academy is the precursors to sabotage, right? So like we're talking about, this is the crash course in sabotage, but if you really want to get on the other side of this stuff, we need to talk about what leads, what, pre, what precedes sabotage, which is what I call drifting. And then I've been working on some content around what precedes drifting, which is some serious mental cool stuff I'm working on. Um, that's for a different time. This is the crash course in sabotage, but sabotage, cause we're talking about what is it? It's, it's that thing you do where you're like, how the fuck did I get back here? I was doing so good like a month ago or three months ago, but how the fuck did I get back here? This is also how people will lose like 40, 50, 60, a hundred pounds and gain it all back and don't even know it. 
because they did it one pound at a time. They didn't notice it. I was speaking with a lady today um, on Instagram. She was, she's, we're talking and she um, mentioned that she lost a hundred pounds and she's about 20 pounds putting it back on. She's, we're just talking and she's asking questions and stuff. But the fact is she caught it. She's like, oh, I'm 20 pounds back on from the hundred I lost because that was a pattern of sabotage and she, she recognized it. So she's getting the help that she needs. It's the same thing for you. What always happens? Get crystal clear on your normal patterns. Okay. Uh, number four, under what is sabotage? Um, here's the thing that most people don't like to talk about. It's based in your identity. I can give you all the tactics, <clears throat> all the strategy, all the things, but your sabotaging is deeply rooted in the beliefs you have about yourself, who you think you are, the story you've sold yourself on, and your identity as a whole. It's no wonder you, because here's the thing, when, when people say, oh, I sabotage, I go, what do you sabotage to? Excuse me. Because you don't just sabotage, you sabotage to something. Most of you listening don't sabotage, you only sabotage to a certain point, right? You don't sabotage, like let's say, uh, just random numbers. Let's say you've weighed 200 pounds for a while. You lose a little bit of weight, you're 180. You sabotage back to 200. You don't sabotage to 230. You sabotage back to 200, right? Everyone's like baseline, if you want to call it that, or their whatever, their, um, their thing is different but you always sabotage to like the same rough thing, even in your money. Like if, like if you don't handle your money well, you notice you sabotage your finances back to roughly the same amount in your bank account, right? For some people that's homeless. Some people that's a thousand dollars in their account. Some people that's like $3. Some people that's like a hundred grand, right? Everyone's different. Everyone's floor is different. I remember when I really struggled with like my money and my sabotaging around my money, I would, I would literally get to like, I would never go fully in the negative. I would be like $3 in the positive. You know what I mean? But it would always get to like that, almost like synchronicities where it's like, why is it always to that? It's never homeless. It's never where I, I can't pay my bills, but it's like, oh, I barely be in the positive. We all do this in all areas of our life. Like you can literally zoom out and look at your marriage, your relationships, your friendships, your business, your work, your weight loss, your whatever. And there's all these sabotaging things. This is why when you diet for, the, for a diet from the inside out, it changes everywhere in your, all areas in your life. Okay. So but like I said, it's based on your identity. It's like that thermostat analogy. If your identity is a 70, 70 degrees, like a thermostat, and your room heats up to 80 because you have the door, door open. So let's say your identity is, oh, I'm I've, oh, I'm always a fat person. I've never been able to lose weight. Now you, you lost weight. Well, now it's no wonder you sabotage back to your identity of a fat person or whatever it may be for you. Um, I was actually talking to the lady today. She was applying for coaching and she um, struggles with sabotage. But then she ironically also had... Um, all these self-deprecating identities around like, I'm never good enough. I'm fat. I'm a piece of shit. All these horrible things. And I told her, I said, don't you think that maybe that's why you sabotage? Because if your identity is I'm a fat, unworthy, blah, 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 all these terrible things. And then you get results. Well, now the identity is threatened because your identity is, n is the shitty version of you. You have great results now. It's no wonder something seems to happen. You find a way back to that shitty identity that the results are now incongruent. It's what always happens. This is why sabotage is a pattern, but you have to address it where it stems from, the identity. So that's the other reason for it. And then the last thing I have under what is sabotage is it's literally like the simplest way I like to put it, like with how to um, think about sabotage. It's like your evil clone that knows you better than anyone, knows what makes you tick, knows everything about you, and only comes to attack you when you're asleep. That's what sabotage is. Now, I know that may, might make you feel like, oh, wow, I'm hopeless. It's not. I promise. Like we've helped hundreds and hundreds of people on overcoming sabotage and we have a system around it. So there's hope for you. But listen to me when I say this. Think of sabotage as that. You're sabotaging because it's like it's you're fighting this. Think of it like an evil clone version of you that knows everything about you, knows your weaknesses, knows your strengths, and only attacks you when you're asleep. Subconscious self-sabotage. It's the same thing. So now let's talk about, um, cause again, like I mentioned, I put it back in my notes. Um, always remember progress is the trigger for sabotage. You making progress. You're like, Oh wow, this seems so easy. Oh, I've never been this far ahead. You are in danger zone. My friend, one of the things, one of the conversations we have with clients all the time is they're doing really well. They're making more progress in the least amount of time and in the most effortless way possible. Like that's what will be happening with our clients. So we need to have the conversation of like, hey, look, I love this. I'm so proud of you. You're crushing it, but do not go mentally to sleep. Do not go unaware because if you are making more progress than you ever have in the least amount of actions than ever, and it's the most seamless it's ever been, 
and it feels like you're getting away with murder is the way that you just worded it to me. You are in sabotage danger zone because there's more reasons than just your identity. And that's what we're going to get into about sabotage, why it happens, but don't go like, don't be oblivious. Don't be ignorant to the fact that you're not, you're like sabotage is going to literally get, try to smack you in the face of the two by four. That's, that's how it goes. When you're like, Oh wow, I'm finally doing it. Oh, this is almost easy. Danger zone. Be aware. Do not think it's not around the corner. This is when sabotage is sneaky, right? It's not this elusive thing, but it is, it sneaks in. Sabotage, um, think of charismatic and persuasive versus like force. Sabotage is very, very persuasive. It's very charismatic. Sabotage is literally what convinces you quitting is a good idea. Binge eating is a good idea. Starting over in January is a good idea. Literally eating like a fucking asshole for the next three months of the year and then starting over in January. And it makes it seem like that's a dope idea. Stop. That's the problem with sabotage. It's a really good salesman. It's like that charismatic dude at the party that every everyone loves, that everyone trusts, that like all American dude, you know what I'm saying? Like that person, that's sabotage. It's not the weird creep that everyone's like, you smell weird. It is literally that fucking sneaky bastard. That's what sabotage is, but it's pattern driven. So you can pick up the patterns and go, oh, he's doing it again. Ah, that's when it happens. That's how we get on the other side of it. So um, what do, uh, why do we do it? Why do we sabotage? Why does it even happen? Because here's the thing. I thought about not even including this part in this talk, but I think it's important because the more you understand this beast that you're fighting, the better chance that you have to kill it, <laughs> right? So why do we do it? Here's why. Your brain, this guy, only cares about self-preservation. Your brain doesn't give a fuck if you're happy. I was just talking with someone today. Someone was applying for coaching. We were having this conversation um, around sabotage because that was like her big thing. And um, she said she'd been struggling with her weight loss stuff for at least three decades, like 30 years. She'd been struggling since she was like a little kid. And we were talking about it. And I said, to be honest with you, your struggle isn't like calories and willpower and discipline and um, that stuff. I go, it's the fact that you've been struggled and been unhappy with your shit for 30 years. Because what's going to happen is you're going to go step over here, here into the land of, oh, I love the way I look. I love the way I feel. And fat loss is simple. Your old self or your ide old identity is like, bitch, what the fuck? Uh-uh. That's dangerous. That stove is hot. Literally, that's how this works. Your mind only cares about what's like your, your mind and your nervous system gravitate to what's most familiar, even if it hurts. Because even if it hurts, even if it's you're unhappy, your brain views it as from a, like a, like a deeper self-preservation side of it sucks, but at least I know I'm not going to die. And at least this feels like home. The thought of being happy, the thought of loving the way I look, the thought of loving the way I feel that sounds scary. And that stove might be hot. So let's just not st let's touch it. Let's stay over here where it's safe. It's literally how your brain works as you're trying to change your entire life and identity and your results. It's why you sabotage. That's literally how this game goes. Uh, an analogy that I, I've been using lately is imagine like, uh, like think of it this way, um, like a person that was born blind. They don't even know what vision looks like or a person that was born colorblind. They, they don't even know what color is. They just see black and white or black or they just see gray. They don't even know what color is like. So if you've only suffered and only struggled, now you're listening to me and you're like, I want to do all this other shit. Your brain is like that, that doesn't even exist. How is it even possible? This is why as a coach, when I help people and my team helps people with this, my goal is to get the awareness as fast as fucking possible, because that's the problem is if your brain is unaware that this land of happiness and everything you want is even there, of course, you're going to gravitate away. This is why as a coach, my first goal is to get you to go, oh my gosh, I didn't think I could do this because then your brain goes, wait a second, this exists and it has evidence. Now you can gravitate to that. But this is why sabotage is such a deeper thing than just, oh, just work harder. I fucking hate it when coaches or other professionals about sabotage comes up with their people and they're just like, just be more mindful. Just work harder. Just do better. Just buckle down. Go fuck yourself. That's not how it works. We're working against years and years and years of old conditioning and that's not your fault. But it's your responsibility because it's your life. It is not your fault you have 30 years of fucked up conditioning around food and weight loss and struggle and unhappiness. It's not your fault that you went with mom to Weight Watchers at eight when she tried to diet you the wrong way because she was just doing the best with what she had, but it still fucked you up a little bit. It's not your fault that you've tried everything known to man under the sun and it just never worked and you've just done the best with what you have, but you failed. It's not your fault. 
But the fact that you are listening to this and me speaking into this mic, it is your responsibility. And I am literally giving you the tools to run with it and change your life forever. Now it is up to you to take this information and run with it. So that's going to be a dope clip. Like I, that just came out and that is going to be a dope fucking clip on, on Instagram. But let's continue around, along the subject. Your brain only cares about self-preservation. So if all you've done is struggled, no, on paper, you are going to drift to struggle. It's like if you, if you're like me and your dogs came from rescues of fucked up owners and your dog's always been beaten, do not be surprised when that dog flinches every time you go to pet it or it runs away from you because of its history. So do not be shocked when you naturally sabotage, when you've only, only failed the last 20, 30 years or however long it's been. Okay. Your brain only cares about self-preservation. That's why you sabotage. It's the identity thing. It's, it's the beliefs that you have and the old shit that's happened from a pattern perspective. So if you've done it the wrong way for so many years, you're going to go there when you are on autopilot. So don't be surprised. This is why you have to stay aware. You have to stay alert. You have to stay on. Do not go subconscious. Stay on so you can plan this. I'm going to get in a little bit deeper. So I'm hoping this is making sense. Next, why do we do it? Not just identity. It's habitual addictions and habits. Here's the thing. Um, so I don't know if you know this or not. Um, I got glasses in like the fourth grade. Okay. Little 14 or little four, a little like fourth grade. Jared got glasses. Well, then like a couple years later, I got contacts. I still have contacts. Um, but you know what happened when I went from wearing glasses to contacts? Guess what? I still did. I did this. I literally like slid, like, you know, when you have glasses, you, they fall down, you slide them up your nose. When I got contacts, it took me a while to stop doing this. If you're watching, if you're just listening to the audio, I'm sliding my finger up my nose, right? Just like shoving my glasses up. You know why? Cause that was a habitual addiction, not addiction. It's a habitual pattern. It was just something I did. I did this so many times for a couple years having glasses. It did that action didn't go away. Just cause I have contacts. I had to like unlearn that. That's why someone who's like smoked cigarettes for years, they have this hand to mouth thing. So guess what? They'll, you'll notice they'll still do hand to mouth stuff, even though they don't smoke anymore because of the history of the action that's been taking. So if every time you've lost every time, let's say the past, um, the past, you know, five years, you've tried to diet and lose weight. You've always quit around day 14. You're going to feel the, the, the desire for no reason on day 14 to quit. If you lose motivation around, if you've always lost motivation around the three month mark, do not be shocked when you lose motivation around the three month mark, when you're doing the new plan or whatever you're doing. This is why guys that the, the secret to your, like your issue isn't just the next diet going from keto to fasting or to weight watchers or going from this calorie intake to that calorie intake. That's surface level bullshit. You got to go to the deep end of the pool. Your solution isn't the next diet, the next challenge, next program, the like the next uh, meal plan, the next supplement, the next, this is why you fail every time is because you are taking surface level problems. I'm sorry. You, you are, because you are taking deep level issues and trying to solve it with surface level problems. I'm sorry. Fuck. I said that wrong. You are having surface level problems and taking surface level answers and solutions to that. And it doesn't work. There we go. Hopefully this is making sense. Um, but otherwise we sabotage. like why we do it is because your identity is, is bad. So you get good results. And then you wonder why something magically happens and you sabotage to the bad identity. That's the first reason. The second reason, um, because it's because your brain, it's because your, um, your brain only cares about self-preservation. That's why. But the habitual addiction is the same thing or is, is, is the other reason from an action and a habit standpoint, you just keep doing the thing you've always done. So then it reinforces it and it keeps staying there. Okay. Thirdly, why we do it. There's uh, emotional addictions and habits. If you let the emotions take the driver's seat, which most people who are struggling do, it's now not just a habit, like an action thing, like the glasses analogy. Now it's an emotional trigger. It's an emotional thing. Let's say you, uh, let's say the scale spikes and you go, ah, oh, fuck, I want to quit. That's what I'm talking about. Or let's say you're, you don't feel, let's say around every like the two week mark or the four month mark or however long you don't feel like going to the gym or you don't feel like tracking your food or you don't feel like doing it today. So you don't, but it's no wonder it's, it's an addiction or a pattern around the emotion. So for some people, it's the identity that kicks in and causes the sabotage for others. It's the emotion that kicks in and causes or the, the, the habit of always falling off at two weeks. So then they do it then, or it's the emotional side, right? There's so many layers to this. So it could be the emotional reason you're falling off. I'll be honest. Here's the fourth one I have written down. Um, it could be a, this is kind of tied to your identity. Uh, it could be a worthiness thing. 
So you know how I many people I talk, I, I talk to struggle with sabotage because they don't feel like they're good enough or they're not worthy of happiness or they feel like they're just not allowed to, to thrive or they feel like they shouldn't or they feel shame around it. And then no wonder that they get great results and then they, they lose them. It's the identity thermostat again. If your identity is I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm not supposed to be happy, and you get great results. It's no wonder that that old self, that sabotaging mechanism comes back in and fucks that up. That's why you have to fix your identity first, okay? So, almost done, two thirds through. So we talked about what sabotage is, got clear on that. We talked about why we sabotage, got clear on that. Third, how the fuck do we fix it? How do we fix it? So this is actually a really, like we go really in depth with this in coaching. We go really in depth with this in my academy, my video course. Um, and if you want either of those, like to apply for coaching, or if you want to get your hands on my academy, I'll leave links in the description. Uh, my academy is a self-study, buy it now, go at your own pace course. The, the, uh, the, the, that's the academy. Coaching is like you have to apply and get accepted and like, be on board to work with my team the whole nine yards. So that's a, you can apply for that below if that's what you want. But I'm going to give you, like I said, this is the crash course. So how do we fix it? A, find the pattern. Find the fucking pattern. You cannot escape a jail. You don't know you're trapped in. I learned that from Joe Dispenza. Um, find the pattern. Most of you guys that are struggling are oblivious to what your pattern is and you have no idea that you're doing it. But So how the fuck can you fix it? You won't. You have to identify the pattern. Get really self-aware, look, zoom out. What happens every single time I've tried to lose weight? What's the, the three or four things that always happen? Okay, now that's number one. Number two, play what I call the if this, then what game. Now that you have the pattern, oh, these are the five things I do. I quit when I'm not motivated. Uh, the scale spikes and I throw in the towel. Or like I, I start getting lazy and go from tracking to rounding, whatever it may be. You have like five things. Now map it out. If this, then what? If this happens, the first thing on your list, I lose motivation. Then what are you going to do? Show up anyway. The problem is most of you that are struggling, wait till you are in the trenches of sabotage and the, or the thing happens to try to fix it and it's too late. It's like waiting till it rains to go buy an umbrella. So play the if this, if this, then what game? If this happens, then what am I going to do? If this happens, then what am I going to do? If this happens, then what am I going to do? Map it out. Your again, your sabotaging has a pattern. It has a breadcrumb trail of all the things. If this happens, then what? If this happens, then what? Map it out. So now you have literally a customized blueprint game plan. Oh, I'm doing it again. Well, what's my note say? If this happens, okay, then what? Do this. And the, and the decision's already done, okay? Number three, what to do to fix it? Rewrite, re, wow, words are hard. Rewrite your identity. We go heavy on this in coaching, heavy on this in the, in the academy. I give you way ton, more tons of prompts in both of those. But rewrite your identity. If that's what you sabotage to, maybe it would help if we fix where that was. If you always drop your results to a shitty identity, why don't you just like put your, like rebuild back your identity here. So now you're actually, instead of sabotaging down to it, it actually pulls your results up subconsciously. It works both ways. Your shitty identity can either drop you down or if it's great, it can pull you up through a hard time. If you don't know how to do all that, or if you don't know like what that even looks like, um, that's way a different subject for a different time and way deeper than this, this podcast episode. Um, to be honest, if you really want to get on the other side of that, then that's like, I would apply for coaching to grab my academy. Okay. And lastly, number four, now it's time to fight. Here's the thing. There is nothing that I can tell you that is going to stop sabotage from trying. Even the identity work, we'll get rid of most of that, but I don't believe every, anything truly dies forever. I don't think the old self truly dies. I don't think flare ups don't happen. We're always going to naturally sabotage. Okay. But you're going to have to fight. You're going to have, like, so far we've just been preparing you for this fight. You found the pattern. Okay, here's what happens. You played the if this, then what game. If this happens, then what? Oh, if he does this, I'm going to do this. You rewrote your identity. You did all the things of who you are now. Now you're going to have to implement it. Because again, your solution isn't another program, diet, plan, whatever. It's how you really unstop or like really make a hedgeway around the identity or the, uh, the sabotaging stuff is the sabotaging pattern tries to set in the pattern and you don't let it. Now you're rewriting mental processes around this stuff. Cause again, sabotage is a pattern that just keeps going rampant over and over and over and over again. So for you, you're breaking the pattern. Oh, the sabotage, you go on autopilot, sabotage starts to hit. You go not today. And you do the thing, go in opposition of the pattern your brain's going to go, what the fuck? We've always fucked up here. We've always lost it here. Why, 
why didn't we, why didn't we, why, why didn't we fail? And you're going to, over time, you keep doing that over and over and over again, you'll sabotage less, sabotage less, sabotage less, and then you'll find you don't sabotage anymore, except for like a random flare up or whatever. You see what I mean? This is why you're going to have to have that multiple of these days of reckoning where the sabotage pattern comes in and you fight it. Like, and this can be so many things. I was just, uh, uh, someone, uh, signed up for coaching today. I'm super pumped for her to get rolling with us. And for her, like, this is another example. She talked about how she'd always struggled. Um, I actually, a lot of people tell us this, that the only time, the only way they've ever lost weight is rapid, fast, super crazy, unsustainable stuff. That's sabotage. So you know what's going to happen when they join my program? And then I go, Hey, we're going to take fat loss slow and sustainable and where it's, you're not doing any of that crazy shit. They're going to feel this desire of, oh no, I'm not doing it fast enough. I'm not working hard enough. This is going to take too much time. Holy fuck. Well, yeah, of course you're going to feel that way. When a, when a drug addict is getting clean, getting high sounds like a great idea. If your old sabotaging mechanism is to lose weight really fucking fast and do uns unsustainable stuff, of course it's going to feel like death to your brain when you're doing it slow, steady, and unsustainable. This is why most people, to truly get on the other side of sabotage, you need a coach. You need someone in the trenches with you, watching you, holding you accountable, supporting you, and keeping you from going off the deep end. Because again, when does sabotage hit? Subconsciously. When you're doing good, and it attacks your emotions. This is why most people will fight the same 10 pounds for 10, 20, 30 years, and die with their struggles in hand. This is why most people in the world of sabotage need a coach who's really good. So it just so happens, this is what me and my team fucking specialize in. So just throwing that out there. But anyway, that is it. That's how to fight sabotage. That is your sabotage crash course on what is sabotage, what triggers it, why we do it, and how to fix it. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this makes you rethink everything. Um, keep me updated on how it goes. I would love to hear your journey with this. Um, be sure if this was helpful, do me a favor. Number one, send it to a friend. Share it on your story, whatever it is. I'll reshare it the whole nine yards but then leave me a review. It would mean a ton to me if you left me a review. Um, a five-star review would be amazing or whatever you think this is deserving of. Um, just don't be the asshole who like, who says, oh, I love your content. I just hate that you cuss so much and give me a fucking two-star review because I say fuck. If that's you, don't even listen to my show. <laughs> but anyway, that is it for today's episode. I appreciate you. I love you. Um, before you go, there's all the goodies in the, in the description. Um, there are my fat loss checklist. I have a free course. If you haven't gone through that yet, it's a free video course that will change everything for you with making this game simple, sustainable, and not that big of a deal with fat loss. Um, if you are not, uh, if you haven't joined my Facebook group, it's my private, or not, it's, it's public, but like we vet people, um, who want to come into it. Um, it's free. I have a community called fat loss simplified. That is your home base. You are going to need during these days of struggle and all the things trying to get on the other side of this stuff. You're going to need somewhere to go to, to get loved on, to get supported, to be around the right kind of people. Um, and it's totally free the way that I do it. Um, because you can join my free Facebook group, um, the links below, or just go to Facebook and search fat loss simplified. Um, what else? Uh, and if, like I said, if this is something that you're serious and want to prioritize getting on the other side of, um, you can always apply to join our coaching program below. Um, I, pr I take pride in my podcast listeners and you can go straight to the front of the line. Um, there's literally a calendar link below. Just click it and go straight to the, straight to the book of calls. So we can see if this is a good fit. Um, otherwise that's it. Let me know if you need anything. I love you. I appreciate you. And I'll talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.